modifying the terrain height and painting the terrain. But this unfortunately is only going to be for Unity 3.5 users. Um, I'm pretty certain that this will not work on Unity 4, this package. So if you have that, I'm sorry. And unless you find some other methods or some tools on the asset store, then you're going to have to work with painting your own terrains. Okay. See you on the next video. Now for Unity 3.5, let's see what I'm talking about. So let's just go to a new scene. Not particularly going to save that. Now there's another package out there which is excellent for working with terrains, especially if you like me. You just want to pump out a terrain that looks good, but you really don't have the time or the skill to work on it. So we're going to do a search for. A, let's say this used to be in the asset store, but as it's not compatible with Unity 4, it was. Taking them. So we're looking for a company called Six Times Nothing. Okay, and there it's come up there. So we have their main page. We have what I'm looking for the Terrain Toolkit. You may have heard of and even used their Road and Path Tool. Now, I think this is still available through the Asset Store, so that is compatible, but the Terrain Toolkit is not. So we're going to go to their website there. Okay, straight up, you see it's very clear. You have a download link, and you also have an instructional video. Now, absolutely watch this video. Again, unlike mine, it's only eight minutes long, and it will show the features in much more detail than I'm about to. So when you're ready, click on one of your download links. It'll bring you to this page here. Navigate to Downloads, and download the zip here. Terrain Toolkit 1.0.2. So download that zip. When it's downloaded, unzip it, and you'll be left with a package. Now I've already put mine ready to go. So Community Assets Import Package Custom Package. Now browse to your computer where you saved the unzipped terrain toolkit, and there you should see a package just like that. Let's open that. Check what's being imported. Looks like everything is new. So I click import. Okay, as you see, there is even there is even some compatibility issues with 3.5. Now, this is to do with the editor GUI layout. It's how the inspector view is presented. So I'm not even going to go into these scripts. First, I'm going to refer to a question that I asked in this. Okay, that's a very quick fix. Here's the two lines I've isolated. And here's the old definitions of the functions. Well, these are all the parameters that the old function looks for. And the way the function is set out now, the new parameters requires that this false be added. Okay, so let's just open those scripts up. Double click on the message. Your script editor will open. And the offending line will be highlighted. So if we look at this object field command here, here we're looking for another parameter. False. Save that out. Let Unity compile. There's, that's dropped out, and we still have one remaining warning. So again, if we look at this object field command. And it requires a new parameter. False. Save that out again. Unity compile. Okay, and now that has been prepared. So let's get on with it. Terrain, create terrain. Here is our terrain. Let's move that out of the way. Now we're looking in the terrain toolkit. Okay, have some readme. This is what we're after, triangle, drag and drop. As you can see, it has its own inspector, and that was what we just repaired there. Let's modify these settings here. Okay, I might even collapse some of this. Collapse the terrain, looks so like Collapse the collider. So this is the terrain toolkit. Now what does it do? If you watch the video, you know. So that's awesome. Okay, first we can 
use this to just create a random height for us. Let's try and make a map without actually having to paint the height. So we're going to create. Now, I know about Berlin, but let's see if we can do what I saw in the video. Let's just get some peaks happening first. Let's create. And there we go. We have pretty much a random generator happening here. Okay? So we've got some basic peaks happening. Let's add some more detail. So what else have we got? Smooth normalized Perlin is noisy. Uh, fractal. Okay, we have a blend factor here. Now this is how strong the terrain is going to be affected by when we click this button. That was poor definition. Okay, so if we have the blend down low, when we click this button, the terrain is not going to change that much. It's pretty much the same as opacity in the paint. So let's bring it down quite low, so I don't want to lose all these peaks. I just want to add some extra noise in between the peaks. So we'll hit that. There we go. You see that was quite low. Only a little bit of noise has been added to there. So let's bring it up a little bit more and maybe modify the delta to see if we get some large areas in between. There we go. That certainly had an effect, didn't it? Alright. So not exactly what I'll do too much, so. Bring the blend down a little more. Try one more. There we go. So we've still got our peaks that were defined. We've added some more detail to our lower flat areas. Okay. And because I like Perlin, I just want to click that button. As you see, there's lots of different things to play with here. Now I'm just going to turn the blend right down. I just want to bring in some waviness to it all and see if I can't knock that peak. Okay, see so there was some more information added to the terrain. The whole thing just pretty much rose. So let's bring the optics down. Try that again. Okay, so we saw a few waves bump in there as I brought the optics down. Okay, let's leave it there. So finally something we could definitely do to this is smooth. So we could normalize. Normalize will take a lot of the bumps and the jaggies out of it. Maximum height, minimum height blend. Down. Let's see what that does. Okay. Seem to create more definition into things. Alright, so that's good. We've created a little bit more definition. Let's just move the whole thing and try and finish up. So blend. Try that quite low at first. Okay, that looked like it had a small impact. Of course, like I said this is from far, far away. Looking at the screen. See a better result. There we go. We can see how they're starting to really flatten out each time we click that. Okay. So there we have it. Using the terrain toolkit to randomly generate our terrain. Like I said, there are so many settings in here. We have presets. So if you like me and have trouble creating your own terrains. This is a fantastic generator. Now we haven't even touched what I consider to be one of the best features of this little kit. It's if we hit the texture tab. Okay, so just like when we first created the terrain normally, we don't have any textures. So let's add texture. I'm going to add four textures. So I'm just going to get that box ready. You can see we've got some things I'm going to explain. So the first texture is defined by the toolkit as cliff texture. So let's try and make sure we use a cliff texture there. It will become apparent for reason in a moment. Again, they're all together and I'm still having trouble seeing them. Let's try a cliff with grass this time. Okay, so as usual with the first texture that's been applied to everything, but this is just the beginning. Let's bring in some other textures. So if I'm starting low, I'll get a bit darker grass this time. We'll start with meadow. Come into a hill and then come into a grass and rock. Okay, so there's some different textures that hopefully give some kind of variation. Now, what do we do with these textures and these tabs? Okay, well, first off, we have the cliff texture. Now, what this does is this will apply cliff textures to slopes. That's why it has to be the first one because any slopes. We'll be using this texture. Now how do you set the slopes? 
Now here is the gradient. Well, it's more like the angle. So if I said any angle of a terrain that's after 55 or 60 degrees, start painting cliff texture. And when that angle of the side of the terrain gets to about 75 or more, anything above 75 degrees, we're only going to be using the cliff texture. So that's what that first slider is for. Now the second slider is for adding all these other textures to our terrain. So we're starting at the bottom with the grass texture. So we want to blend it out. I didn't want it to come too high. Now this is a percentage factor of our whole terrain. So if our height was 600, this was 0.1, then it would paint this texture up to 60 meters high. So let's test that out anyway. Now similarly to where there are two tabs for the cliff blend and then the cliff outright, these two tabs are the same thing. For this period, we are blending between one and two. From this point onwards, this is where we are only showing two. So we're only going to show two from here. Let's bring it up a bit more. Now for our final texture, we're going to blend between two and three in this area. And then anything past the three will be our final texture. So let's just hit apply. Give it a second to think. And there we have it. Had some textures automatically applied to our terrain based on the height of the terrain. Now let's look over here where we can see some definite contrasts. As I pull in even closer, I feel that the tiling is too small. So I'm going to go to each texture, edit the texture, double the tiling so it seems to be the normal. Hit apply. Now let's zoom back in on that and see what's happening. Collapse that. Okay. So you can see for the parameters I've set. It's found those height values and said, okay, when I get to this height, I'm going to blend between two textures. Do a marginal blend. Okay, so we see the blending's not great there already. So first, let's spread that blending down. Okay. I'm going to drop the grass down off this big hill too. Well, it suits there well. So I'll drop that down a little bit. Maybe a bigger blend area. See what that's doing. Okay, so that, there is a far more gradual blend there, going from grass to dirt and grass. Now, we're not really seeing anywhere where the cliff texture is coming into play. Perhaps I've set the angles too high there too. So let's bring it back down. I think it was 45 at the top of procedural. Something changed in there. But it was very slight. Let's bring the cliff slopes right down. And there we go, as you saw immediately. Let's change that tile. Oops. On the terrain. On the texture of the terrain. Get it. So as I was describing before, this value here is at what angle of the train do we start including cliff? You see, even that was a steep gradient, so the cliff has been included into that grass there. If I raise that to a steep angle in, there we go. You see the cliffs have started to disappear. They're only starting to pop out here. So there you go. I've rambled quite a bit here, but I'm trying to show a lot in something that I'm not great with. That's why I rely a lot on this tool here. And as you saw afterwards, we still have all the other terrain tools. We don't have to use the terrain toolkit, we can still modify. Let's see if we can do that. Let's look at the height. I want to bring the height of that mountain down. Okay, so let's bring that down, the opacity. 
fuzzy brush. Very small fuzzy brush. Okay, so you see, even after we've used the terrain toolkit, we can still modify our terrain. Now, if we want that height to blend in with our other heights, all we have to do is reapply the texture. And there we have it. Our heights have been changed and they've been updated. Look, that's actually shows some nice squibs coming through. Okay. So you can add more definition after using the terrain toolkit yourself again. We'll look at painting. Just say we want to put some dry areas and some low lying areas. So again, your brush and you strengthen your opacity. There we go. Okay. Let me strength up so you can see that really working. There you go. So you can see, even after we've done that, now just be aware of course if you do manually paint anything and then go back and hit the button, that will be overwritten by the settings here. Okay, so as I said, I've made this rather ramble, but I hope this has shown a few exciting things that you can just quickly pull into your project and use and do more than I've done, sit here for two seconds and manipulate these values. Really work by playing at what kind of terrains this will create for you. See, look at that. Just one slide, one boom. There we go. Now, let's reapply our textures to that. Okay, wow. Gives you a lot of contrast. That must be a really rocky place. And it looks like it sure is. Okay. So again, just play around for two seconds. Smooth. I smooth it quite a lot. So now it's quite rocky. Let's go on. Look, let's take it back one. Let's bring the blend down a half back. Okay, a little bit more. Oh, that wasn't too much again. That's probably the range actually. It's probably how far out I am. You see, there's still a lot more definition. This is how far out I'm zoomed. And again, if you make any modifications to the heights, go to your texture tab, apply your textures. And there we have it. Auto generating terrain and auto painting terrain. Fantastic. See you on the next one.